Hello, hello, I'm Florentina Faconti, and today I'm doing something a little bit different. Today I'm joined by the lovely Mary Ann, and we are going to be talking about our favourite show on Netflix, Sex Education. Hello, Mary Ann, you've come dressed Hi. very differently. Yeah, all dressed. I love it. I love it so much. So I've recently done a spoiler free review of Sex Education, where I briefly spoke about how this show has taught me more than any of the sex education that I got at school. So I wanted to start with what your experience was at school with sex education. I'm pretty sure it's like you. I think I had zero. I remember year six, so what with 10, 11, 10, I did remember doing the female anatomy diagram and that's about it. And then at secondary school, I'm pretty sure we had one of them old school VHS videos from the seventies. And yeah. that's pretty much about it. Yeah. Pretty much. I remember in year five, so like nine, ten, um, we were split into boys and yeah. girls. The girls would go into one classroom and learn about periods and the boys would go into another classroom. And I have no idea what they learned about because Same. we spoke about it. But I know for a fact that the next day after our period talk, everyone was terrified that they were going to like bleed out and die. <laughs> like it caused mass hysteria and like it was so bad looking back yeah. at it now like we were all traumatized because they didn't teach us properly they were like right you're just gonna bleed <laughs> yeah really I remember when I got my first period like really panicking and I remember saying to my mom like oh my god what's going on what's going on because they just don't prepare you they're just no. like this is gonna happen have fun <laughs> like cheers <laughs> And then I remember in secondary school, like biology class, it was very like scientific. Like yeah. this is like you have to label the parts, like you said, and like you get shown a video that is not relevant anymore because it just doesn't make sense. No. Uh, we did you guys watch a birthing video? No. Oh my god genuinely our teacher was like so we're gonna watch a video of a woman giving birth and I went no <laughs> no thank you and yeah we had the option that we didn't have to watch it I was like I'm not watching this it's gonna drop yeah. back to life yeah I'm pretty sure for biology we did the labeling of the bodies but we learned more about animals like sexual reproductive systems more than ours and then for like PSHE or whatever it was where the sex ed was covered it was done by my maths teacher who wasn't the best to uh, talk to <laughs> about certain private issues and he literally just put the like wheeled out the video <laughs> you I know on the ad yeah you know the advert they've got now for the sex education for breast cancer awareness mm. for the tits teeth and toilet it was mm. literally one of those VHS videos where they brought out on the wheels <laughs> it was like watch this can I ask a question? No. Yeah. No. That, that in the show was so relatable where they did like split them off into the two groups, the, the boys and the girls. And Mr. Hendricks was like, you can't ask questions. Like, mm. I, I'm going to lose my job if you ask questions. And they're all like asking about like homosexual relationships and things like that. And you don't learn about that. And it's like... It's, it's like, this is a man's body. This is a woman's body. This is the scientific thing that happens. Okay, good luck. And it's like, what? I remember in PSHE, for those that don't know about PSHE, it's like physical, social, health, health education, education. Something like yeah. that. It's, it's basically just about life, but not really much about life. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and we... We had a sex ed lesson where our teacher just put up loads of pictures of um, STIs and what it would do to your body. That was traumatizing. Um, mm. And then she put <laughs> she put a condom on a banana. I remember this so vividly. She squeezed it so all the banana stuff went into the thing. She tied it up and to show us how strong it was, she like swung it round, <laughs> no word of a lie. She swung it round about three times. It broke at the knot and it hit one of the kids in the face. 
I just, oh my God, it was, I was so traumatized from any sex education that I had at school because it was just mm. so badly. <laughs> I didn't even have that experience though with like the condoms and stuff like that. I'm pretty sure it was literally just the video and maybe we had like a side lesson where it was just the girls talking about like our bodies and stuff. I really don't remember it. So I obviously didn't have it, which is such a shame. Mm. It, it, like that sticks in my mind as something really funny, but not yeah. informative at all. Mm. Like, how is that supposed to help me in life? No, um, party trick. It, it party trick. Like that. <laughs> yeah, I just, I was just like knowing that it could break that easily. That's terrifying. Like, yeah. oh my god. Like, I. It is just trauma, and I think that this show is so important because it teaches you it in a really like entertaining way that you like take it in a bit mm-hmm. more. Like, you don't even notice that you're taking things in. And I've learned about so many things I didn't even know existed. Same. Same. Like, um, you know, Lily's story with vaginismus. Mm-hmm. I had no idea what that was before that show. I was like, like, if, if that happened to me, I think that I was broken. And there yeah. was like so many things in this show where they go for therapy because they think that there's something wrong with them. They think that they're broken because you don't learn about these things. Amy discovering that there are so many different vulvas is amazing and her vulva cupcakes, because again, growing up, you just have the stigma of it has to be like this or just like this. And you have the guys joking about stuff like that and porn and everything like that. You think that Mm. has to be one way. So that whole storyline was beautiful to watch. Mm, Cause like, you have no idea. It's no, you you just, think that yours is normal until like you see something else you're like oh wow it's not (laughs) yeah and And how like straight face they did it with uh the girl walking up to amy and going like oh this is a bit disgusting and she's like actually no all of them are different all of them are beautiful enjoy it whichever one you have and i was like yes amy yes what was it that she got steve to do it was like like all vulvas (laughs) (laughs) are unique or something like that yeah, yeah I love that how like supportive he was of her like journey and everything and it just it, that whole storyline was like yeah I feel so empowered because like mm-hmm. yeah, they are all unique so one of the most important storylines in the show is Amy and her sexual assault on the bus I know that you really love this storyline I mean like love's probably not the right word but I don't really know which one to use. No, I love the fact that it's being portrayed and shown in such a, like, well-watched show that thousands and thousands and hundreds of thousands of people are watching because it's not something that we talk about enough. And especially with the current events that are happening in today's society, it's Mm. an ongoing thing that we as women have to constantly think about. So the fact that we get to see this happen, it's such an awful thing. But what comes out of it is it's beautiful when Mm -hmm. everything yeah definitely and I think the start of the story where it happens and she just brushes it off as nothing is Mm -hmm. so important because there are so many things that happen to women daily like you get catcalled and you're like yeah whatever it just happens all the time but it shouldn't happen and like we don't highlight that bit that it shouldn't happen we're just like oh it happens and we deal with it so it's happened to both her, of us yeah it's so. it, even when I was like younger like when I was a literal child walking the street mm-hmm. it's so bad so like seeing that on screen and her dealing with it that way to start off with and Maeve being like no you need to go and report this. like this is bad and then showing like her actually realising that, yeah, this was quite bad and I am quite traumatised from it. Yeah, and then it takes time because we get told so many times, like, it's up to us. We have to protect ourselves. We have to make sure we know what we're doing. We have to dress this way. We have to blah de blah blah We've all heard it. We keep hearing it in the media, you know, thanks to the police saying that we need to do things. <laughs> yeah. Um, but with the whole so in series two, when you had all the... Uh, uh, female characters arguing in the library and her just suddenly realizing that that's all stupid that doesn't matter what matters is what's happened to her 
and her realizing that this is a big thing this is a big deal Mm. yeah that seems heartbreaking just her whole face just realizing that she is so upset from it yeah like not being able to get the bus again because like it probably wouldn't happen again but it could and that's like it it's so it was I'd like even thinking about it, it's so heartbreaking because she is such an incredible actor as well. Yes. I think she pulled that off so well. Mm-hmm. And but- with with the bus at the end when they all get on the bus with her, I think is one of my favorite moments. Yeah. Not just the show, but of TV ever. Ever. Like we're it's all so simple. Us. It's so simple but so beautiful. And I I, I cried. I, I cried. Oh my god. Honestly, I was a yeah. wreck every time I've seen that, just because you do have to kind of like band together as women and be like, yeah, this happened to you. We're going to like, we're not telling you you need to get over it, but we're going to help you. Yeah. Right. And ev- every single one of those characters had something that's happened to them, which Amy didn't realize and then makes you realize it could be the smallest thing, but it stays with you forever. And mm. you're constantly thinking that in your back of your mind. And we shouldn't have to do that. Mm. genuinely if someone came to me with a story you could relate to them and be like well that didn't happen to me but this thing happened to me and it shouldn't have but you just deal with it because it it does just happen every day which is so bad but then her like recovery journey wasn't just like written off after season two it moved into season three that she was still affected by it she couldn't like be intimate with her boyfriend and not even like sexually it was like she didn't enjoy him touching her like having a cuddle or like she just felt uncomfortable around him because of what this other man had done to her which is why it's so important that they showed her recovery sessions with Jean with the therapy of her realizing that it's okay to feel this way because this happened to you you're not supposed to just wake up the next day and be like okay I'm back to normal I'm fine because that is ridiculous yeah, anyone totally. who can do that is like a superhero because it's nonsense yeah. it's showing that and the whole scene with her saying like well I smiled at him so that's what caused it and then oh, Jean yeah. saying like well have you smiled at strangers before she was like yeah and have you ever been assaulted by any of those strangers like no it's like well it wasn't your fault then like you are allowed to smile at people you're allowed to be friendly and not have them ejaculate on you like it's yeah. it's like it's the victim blaming that goes on in society and it's so horrible that when you're in that situation you're like well it was my fault but it wasn't like and that was so great to see because I know that like young girls will watch it and even like young boys and non-binary, just everyone will watch that and be like, oh, well, this thing that happened to me probably wasn't my fault. I feel like not enough people are watching it because like then we wouldn't be having conversations like we are at the moment in the world where it's like, well, you need to do this. You need to not do this. And it's, oh, it's so good. (laughs) well done to the writers of sex education and to all the actors for portraying the because they are tough storylines and I don't know how half of them do half of this half of them because they do oh, it's perfect the way they end up doing them mm. and it makes us feel comfortable in watching it which mm. is I think really important because sometimes I think stories tv shows miss that they try mm. and portray something but they don't do it to a good standard so you feel like a little bit uncomfortable watching it yeah or it's like too preachy yeah what I love about this show is that they kind of do it in a light-hearted way that you don't feel uncomfortable you don't feel like oh my god this is traumatizing or you don't feel like oh they're trying to make a point here they are just telling a story in the way that they know how to and the theme of the show and it doesn't like stand out as something odd it's just so perfectly placed among like all the comedy and everything. What they're good at doing is, and I know most TV shows and films try to do this, is showing it through the character's eyes, through their journey, without, like you said, being preachy, 
they've obviously got a script and they've gone, we need to hit these points, but not go in. This is this, this is that. We, we, we develop with the characters. So getting to see their journey and feeling it and going through them with them, I think that's what they're really good at doing. Mm. On that note that we're like developing with the characters, do you feel like the third season is a bit different because the kids are growing up now? It's become like slightly more serious. It's still funny, yeah. but it, the whole tone overall has kind of changed and developed with them. Oh, like, totally. I think as well, we were able to see like more storylines, which we wouldn't have been able to see in series one. So with um, oh Isaac, his whole storyline and stuff, I don't think that would have worked in series one because we were establishing the core characters. Mm. So to bring him into series two and then series three even more, I think is really, really helpful. And seeing more of like the adult storylines as well. Yeah. So you're getting a little bit deeper, a little bit darker, only a tiny bit because you've still got the like the nuance of the whole show. Um, but yeah, no, I do feel like because we already know the characters, they're already well established now. So we're getting to see behind them even more, which I really like. Yeah, it's it's just grown so much. Like I to prepare for this video, I kind of went back to the beginning just to like remind myself about it. And even like seeing them, they all look so much younger because it was like a couple of years ago yeah. even though it was like last year in the sort of in the seasons yeah but it it I love that it's different like some people haven't enjoyed the sort of tone change they it, it, it doesn't feel like the same show or something but it no. it's so good because yeah. I would get so bored of it if it was the same thing it needs to it needs to change because otherwise like the simpsons is great but it's essentially the same thing over and over and over again whereas and t- you don't always want to watch it because I'll, I'll get bored i was like i've seen that storyline i've seen that storyline but with this yeah. showing them different storylines showing that it's a bit deeper and darker because they're growing up so they're feeling things differently to how they were two years ago as 15 and 16 year olds even if it's just a year i remember being at school and moving from uh GCSE years to sixth form years so what to 16 to 18 it's such a tidal change of difference in just one year that we're getting to see that in the show and again it's helping kids and helping people out there realize oh it's okay to feel differently it's okay to things to change it's okay for your opinion to change this is why it's great (laughs) so another really important character in season three was Hope the new headmistress what did you think of her? I, okay, I was about to say I loved her. No, I didn't love her. I loved the character because we got to hate her. Yeah. That's why I loved it because I think we needed that sort of baddie in the show because now we don't have um, Mr. Groff anymore as the bad person. Mm. Side note, I ended up loving him in series three. Oh my God, his character development was amazing. Yeah. Like, oh. Again, beautiful, beautiful. Well done, writers. Um, so we needed that baddie and little things throughout the series just made you hate her even more Mm. did you like her at the beginning yes I thought you would because I feel like you would love that kind of teacher that comes out does a little dance I I love that but that was (laughs) (laughs) where I I was literally whereas I was like I hate this person already like I I do not like like any teacher that comes out and dances and I'm like no no thank you don't like I think I kind of knew that she was because it just kind of portrayed us in the trailer as slightly like mixing things up changing things so you knew something was going to happen but not to the extent that it did Mm. so yeah I was with the character I was like when she was dancing I was like yeah yeah this is great this is great and then the rest of the storyline was just her it's my sister's phone (laughs) I was like what was that noise (laughs) but um Um, the moment that I like I didn't like her and then the moment that I really started to hate her was when Jackson went to the so you had Jackson and Adam sat outside her office and she just assumed that because he's head boy Jackson was going to be the white one Mm -hmm. and that is so overlooked and I didn't even notice it much the first time. I it, In my head, I was kind of like, mm, I, I don't like her. I didn't realise why until someone pointed it out after. I was like, oh, 
that's why I didn't like her. Mm-hmm. It just, no, I... Something subconsciously went, mm, not sure about her. And that moment was so important because like Adam was one of like the worst students and like he caused so much trouble as well as not being very good academically. Whereas Jackson was one of the best. Mm-hmm. And she just assumed that Adam was going to be the good one. And it just, from that moment on, I just had such a bad feeling about her. I think it set her up really nicely being portrayed as that character. Because I remember watching it and going, oh, here we go. And I I actually thought they might have done more of a storyline about that. But I actually think it was, the fact that it was so small actually worked for this series because it was one thing leading after another, after another, after another. The whole signs situation was awful to oh watch God. and to live through. Uh, could, could you imagine? I remember being in assemblies and I was a prefect. So sometimes we had to be up on stage and I got a little nervous just talking as a prefect. So then being like essentially bullied on stage yeah. by an adult in front of the whole school. Mm. Could, you can, oh, I can feel, oh no. And the whole thing with like taking everything away from Lily that made oh. her her like yeah. honestly like it what does it start off with it was the uniform and then it was, it was the hair and the makeup her hair. yeah <laughs> <laughs> she Just, stripped lily that's what she did both emotionally and physically she stripped her personality away and it was heartbreaking it was watching so lily destroy her room and destroy because oh it was her imagination her inside that she essentially destroyed and this was just a blank canvas Mm. and oh I felt so bad because she was already being torn down by the teacher anything that her peers would say she took so to heart because even like before people would say stuff they think she was weird but she didn't care because she was in her own world and I loved Mm. that about her but because she was so vulnerable because she didn't have her personality showing on the outside it just affected her so much. And like that scene between her and Otis, it was just like so beautiful because it kind of went full circle. Yeah. From season one. And that she was embracing who she was again. And like, because it affected her relationship with Ola as well. Yeah. Like just everything broke down for her in that season yeah it was just oh I found the most heartbreaking to watch is when she went back to school and she was had nothing that made her Lily she was just plain and the other characters even though they wouldn't have meant meant it bad they were like you actually look normal you look nice you look beautiful but Mm. she she already did that before because that was Lily and the fact that now she's like oh there obviously was something wrong with me because now people are saying I look great yeah. I was like, no, Lily, don't listen. You, you're amazing. You're beautiful as you are. Go back. And I just, it, her whole storyline broke my heart. Even like the flashbacks from when she was little. Oh, I loved, yeah. I loved her mum. Yeah. Was it Sophie yeah. Thompson that was playing her? Because I got so excited. Yeah. But the fact that she, she didn't understand, but she, she tried. Let her embrace yeah. it. Yeah. And, but, I just got so excited about Sophie Thompson. I was like, that was perfect casting mm. for her mum because Sophie Thompson always plays kind of weird character. Yeah. And it, I, I just loved how they showed that, that the parents didn't get it, but they were like, we're going to support you. You you do what you want. You can yeah. plaster your walls with all of the weird stuff that she puts up. Like, it is... It is weird, but that is her, is what makes her, her her. And it's just so beautiful that they embrace that in the in the show. Yeah. I think it's good as well, speaking of like parents and adults, that there's a few of the storylines, and they're only small where it's showing and allowing parents to be like, okay, I don't understand everything that you love, but I'm gonna try. Even if it's just one little thing, like in this one where Jackson's mom, obviously they had a rough couple of series sometimes, and then Jackson's like can I join you on your run now and just they're building their relationships and rebuilding after having because obviously their parents are completely different generations as it's shown by um Adam Groff's mom and her situations and stuff like that so showing them like they're learning you can learn at any age to 
be more open and discuss more things and allow yourself to be like, okay, might not understand, but I'm here to have the conversation. And mm. I think that's great as well, showing, because there's obviously going to be adults and parents watching the show too, mm. not just kids, not just teenagers. So it, again, it's open to everyone and it's showing everyone that it's okay. Just listen and take one step at a time. Mm. I, on that note about Jackson and his parents, that conversation that they had where he didn't understand what he was feeling and yeah. he felt comfortable enough to go to his mum played by the absolute phenomenal Hannah Waddingham I didn't know that she was going to be in this season and when she turned up I was like yeah open the door I'm like yes she's there but that conversation was so great because yeah he he just didn't get it and he thought right I'm gonna go to a person that would understand how I'm feeling and yeah. he happened to be his mum. And I, I found that so great that he could have that conversation about like his sort of sexuality and not understanding it. Yeah, and it wasn't forced. It wasn't, neither of them were pressuring one another. The mum wasn't pressuring Jackson to say or put words in his mouth. And mm-hmm. Jackson wasn't pressuring the mum to say certain things as well. It was just natural. And they took their time and then they revisited the conversation a little bit afterwards. And it was just, it was nice to watch and to see that happen like you said mm. it it didn't feel like a parent and a child talking it just felt like two adults having a grown-up conversation and like trying to understand each other and mm-hmm. understand themselves while they were doing it and it was just it was yeah. so great which would bring us back to hope full <laughs> <laughs> <And> circle <laughs> And I do think it was important that she had her whole IVF storyline. As much as we didn't like the character, but her having the conversation both with Jean and with Otis in the hospital, I think was really important to be had as well, because we haven't had that storyline yet. No, we have a pregnancy storyline mm. of a sort of older mother with um, right. Jean and yeah. the fact that her partner had a vasectomy as well. So a pregnancy that shouldn't happen. Yeah. But these things do happen. And I love that they included that, but then also IVF, because that seems very taboo. Because yeah. like the way to have a baby is to do the do and then it happens. And like I feel like people get embarrassed about saying, like, oh well, we couldn't conceive. Mm-hmm. And I love that they included that about that character that I mean. Not that it excused some of her behaviour, but you understood where her sort of pain was coming from. Yeah. And, like, you you saw her as more of a human rather than just a plain villain. Yeah. It doesn't justify her actions, but you do understand, like, her thoughts and where she's coming from, what she's trying to achieve. She just doesn't do it the right way. Yeah. It, 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 doesn't. it also shows that... Like, you don't know what's going on in people's lives. And it's like, no. people really hated her at school. But then when Otis kind of found out about what was going on, he was really kind to her. Yeah. Like, understood that she was struggling. But it also shows that people do react badly to, like, mm-hmm. a situation that's going on that you don't know about. So, like, someone in your life that could be being really horrible could be going through something really awful. And it's like, I I just love that they included that. So, in the show, as much as they explore, like, romantic love, they heavily emphasise platonic love between friends. And I know that you love those storylines, especially Maeve and Amy. Oh, it's just so beautiful to watch. Because I actually think, fundamentally, the show while it's called sex education, it's about friendship and it's about core Mm. relationships that you will have in your life, especially while at school, but also after school that will continue. Mm. And Maeve Maeve and Amy and then Otis and Eric are two of my favourite, favourite, favourite relationships on the show. And actually like all time favourite relationships. Mm, Definitely. Because they both allow, so the two separate ones, both allow each other to be like vulnerable so between the two girls and between the two guys and they're there for each other, they have arguments, they break up with their friendship but then they get back together as friends and I think it's so important to watch that, that 
uh, platonic friendship love is just as important as romance. Definitely. What I love about Otis and Eric is in any other show, they would say that Otis ends up gay and yeah, they end up together. Totally. That totally. would that would be just the ultimate end that they end yeah. together. But that's not what it is between them. No, they are or best friends. It would have been Eric secretly in love with Otis. Yes. Yeah. And it's just not. And that's, that's reality. That's true life. You can have friends that you don't love and fall in love with that way. Yeah. And oh, it's so great to watch. It's so good. And like the support that Maeve and Amy have for each other, like on paper, that friendship shouldn't work because no. at the beginning, she was one of the popular girls. Amy was one of the popular girls. And Maeve was like the outcast. Yeah. And the fact that they'd like meet up and smoke in the old toilets and just like have a bit of a chat and have a bit of like a, a therapy session um, about Amy's boyfriend at the time, Adam. Mm-hmm. And and then she'd just go off and go with their friends again. And then they'd be what, fine with yeah. that. Watching their friendship blossom has been amazing. And to see them come full circle. So at the beginning, obviously, Maeve was helping Amy out with boys and stuff. And then for Amy at the end to tell Maeve, what, don't be stupid. Don't go after the boy, go after your dreams. Put you first. Mm. I mean, you can't get better full circle than that. I loved that where she was like, if I was saying this to you, what would you say to me? And I feel like that's a conversation that we would have. (laughs) Where where I'm pretty sure we've already had it, Flo. (laughs) I've given you a bit of advice and then not taking it on myself. And then you've been like, well, what would you say to me? <laughs> like, you are the voice of reason. <laughs> I love what they did with that friendship and that they did have those big arguments as well. Yeah. Like Maeve and Amy had a huge argument and oh, like yeah. really awful to each other. And because they didn't understand, like, I said in my review, such an important part of this show, like the season three, was communication. And like yeah. when things weren't communicated well or where there just wasn't any communication, things broke down. So like how Amy paid for her trip mm-hmm. and she didn't realise why Maeve didn't want that. But then she thought she was doing a good thing because they weren't talking to each other. Yeah. And like, towards the end the communication that they had was so great because they realized that they do actually have to listen to each other to understand and yeah that, that was a common theme with all of the friendships and relationships it's showing that people from different backgrounds um like so obviously um uh, Maeve's working class hasn't got any money Abe's up at uh, Ave, <laughs> Amy's <laughs> other class Ave, yeah that's their together name <laughs> Ave. <laughs> showing that uh Amy's character is from has money she, the family's rich but then they both have mom troubles that you can have same things happen regardless of where you are in life and that connects them as well and the whole mom scene was great too I loved that yeah that just reminded me of you honestly where they were like we can be each other's mums because you were my uni mum you I was like because <laughs> I used to call you mum all the time tonight <laughs> Which is why I'm the uh, 100% most awesome mum ever. You are an awesome mum. But um, yeah, I loved that, that your friends could substitute as family. Like that kind of theme of chosen family was so beautiful. Like because she has been so abandoned by all of her family. And like Mm. because her her mum has a lot of addiction issues her her sister's been taken away from her but she still has a relationship with her um and then her brother just being completely absent like you forget about her brother because he just like turns up yeah. and leaves um and having that in the school was so beautiful like that she she felt safe around that one person not everyone's lucky enough to have like great relationships with any family members and stuff like I'm good that I'm really close to my mom but I know other people aren't as close to their mom and stuff like that so allowing that to be like it's okay for that to be a thing but you've you've got someone else you've, your friend is just as important the whole like blood stick in the water for me 
it doesn't mean anything because yeah. you can choose who you want in your life and how much you want them to be there and I think that's really important to show so I have a very important question that I need to know the answer to Motis or Rotis um <laughs> <Go on. laughs> I know that you find that so funny you didn't realize that that was a thing but oh, it, it I didn't know Instagram I've only seen like Mavel and Otis or Ruby and Otis. I've not actually seen Motis or Rotis or I've seen Ruby and Otis deserved more, but not <laughs> Motis or Rotis. <sighs> right. Here we go. I I think Motis, but I think Ruby deserved more. Yes. That's where I'm going to stand because okay. I think watching the relationship between Maeve and Otis, like the roller coaster relationship and stuff, and how it ended, I do think they're better suited for one another. One another, but getting to know Ruby more and getting to know her storyline more, mm. she deserves a kick-ass storyline in season four. She deserves better. I love Ruby. Um, she's played by Mimi Keane. Who did you ever watch a show on CBBC called School for Stars? where Ooh. they went into Italia Conti, the stage school. Yes. She was there, and Kida, who played uh, Jackson. Oh, my God, yes. And, um, like, Leighton Williams, who's playing... Leighton Williams, I remember. Yes, yes. Lo- it, I have followed Mimi since then. So since she was, like, oh my 12, God. 13. Yeah. I love seeing her in this. So the fact that Ruby got more of a storyline in this season... I loved it so much. And you kind of saw why she was the way that she is, like masking. Mm-hmm. Like that's such yeah. a thing. Like how we spoke about hope, that you don't know what's going on behind closed doors, that Ruby was going through a lot and she wanted to put on this persona that she was rich and she had this great life. But then when you go into her home, it's quite small and her dad is really sick and she has to take care of him. And like, it was so great to see her vulnerability yeah the fact that Otis brought that out in her as well showing as well that she's uh, like a carer for her dad is an important storyline too mm. um because again that hap- it's not talked about enough and it happens to yeah. so many like we see like when we watch like we've got pride of Britain awards or stuff like that where they honor the, pu- uh, the public and you see like young carers having to care for their um, dads and moms and grandparents. So seeing that storyline, seeing how vulnerable she actually is, regardless of the bravado she puts on at school. I was so heartbroken for her when she said, I love you to Otis because you could see that she thought about it and she, I didn't think she nearly didn't say it, but she, she felt right and like obviously Otis wasn't ready and that's a whole important storyline yeah. too but for her to say that and then him not say it back oh you could see her eyes her acting Mimi's acting in that five second clip at the end was just, oh. that was so heartbreaking just her yeah. little face when the phone hung up and she was like oh my god like what like why have I done that why did I just do that yeah and like something like that would make you not want to open up to anyone again like and the fact that she felt so comfortable with him felt so safe with him Mm -hmm. to be able to say that and I do love that Otis didn't say it yeah yeah I feel like in real life a guy like Otis would just say it to be polite but yeah the fact that he he had that maturity to be able to be like, well, I don't feel that way about you. Like, I enjoy our time together and I care about you, but I didn't say it because I care about you. And that was so beautiful to highlight. What I really loved in going back to whole platonic love is between Mimi and her two friends, which I've forgotten the names of. Oh my God, what are their oh, names? Oh, I know I know Simone Ashley in real life because I've been yeah. so focused on Bridgerton at the moment. What, <laughs> what's her name? Oh my god. A- Anwa. Anwa and oh what's her name? Olivia. Yes. So between those three, where because obviously Ruby's been more focused on Otis, so their relationships have been a bit, but her sending the text and them to immediately coming, not saying anything, and them just hugging her and being there for her was yeah. again. Oh, it was so important to watch. You don't see that 
with those characters throughout no. they're so horrible to each other and the fact that like in season two was it olivia sent out the picture of ruby yeah like she betrayed her like that and they're still so close and you like you've never seen them be affectionate to each other they are always so awful to each other and then in this season just suddenly seeing that they are best friends and they do really care about each other when it when it comes to it when they need each other they will mm-hmm. abandon all plans and just be like sorry i have to go like my friend needs yeah me. deep down behind all the acts and all their characters that they play at school and stuff, they generally do care about one another and they put one another first above everything else. And mm. again, it was another important moment to watch because no words were needed. Literally, they, uh, Ruby sent out the text. They came running straight away and nothing was said. They just hugged and... Oh, so I cried. Beautiful. I cried. Yeah. <laughs> I cried so much in this. Yeah. Because of no judgment, nothing. It was just they were there for Ruby at a drop of a hat. And you'd know if it'd been the other way around, they would have done it for each of them. Mm. And to show that. Yeah, definitely. Beautiful. But personally for me, I feel like they shouldn't have done a Maeve notice thing. It was always a will they, won't they? Ooh. I feel like it just should have been a, a won't they? Um, <laughs> I don't really know what the, what the word is um, but won't but they? I just like I feel like it should have been like an unattainable thing that they just they just missed their chance with each other and to be fair they have kind of done that um, yeah but I I don't I don't know I just feel like after seeing how he was with Ruby I feel like maybe he should have moved on from Maeve you know because mm. he was always so obsessed with it and like, but that's why he couldn't say he loved you to Ruby because he was still in love I know. with Maeve. And he, he just didn't, deep down, didn't realise until Ruby said, I love you. And he was like, oh, OK, no, I can't. But like the whole in Paris scene, in, in France scene with in the petrol station was... I, I, I liked it. I did. And I was excited when they kissed. But I just, I don't know. I feel like I didn't want it to happen. But technically, it it doesn't. Technically, she doesn't not. choose the boy, which again yeah. brings us back to that storyline. Very important. Oh my god! Yeah. I keep saying the word important, but it is everything. It is impo- it. This show is important. If you don't watch it, what are you doing with your life? We're doing unimportant things. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, I don't know. I don't know what it is. It just the fact that every like cliffhanger was. Oh, they missed their chance. They missed their chance. I feel like maybe they should have moved on from it. I think they are going to move on from it now, but yeah. we'll come on to that at the end of the video. But I, 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 I think it would have missed, they would have missed a great opportunity if they hadn't done it the way they did it. Yeah. Because while that is great, the whole like, they're not, they missed the voicemail, deleted the voicemail. They haven't said how they're truly feeling. You're all about communication flow. They communicated. They are. They are communicating. They finally communicated. I know. I know. But I don't know what it is. I'll probably have to rewatch it and I'll get excited about it again. But I just, I was so on the rotis train. Um, <laughs> I, <laughs> I love how you find that so funny. But I, I was just so on board for rotis. And then <sighs> it just, I don't know. Yeah. Love a ship name, but Motus or Rotus will go down. <laughs> it's together, Motus or Rotus. So we talked about a lot of things in this video. We could talk about so many more things, but we'd be here forever. And I want to talk about your predictions for season four. Can we please talk about the potential relationship between Raheem and Adam? Yes. Yes. Oh my God. Ori- yeah, originally when they... Slightly doing it, I was like, mm, I don't know if I like this. But then towards the end, I was like, actually, I think I might be here for that potential relationship. Yeah, it's with the, um, bear with, <clears throat> it's with the poetry. The fact yeah. that Adam was in his head doing it because Eric was going to like it. But I think subconsciously he was doing it to spend some time with Raheem and connect with Raheem yeah the fact that the poem was the boy I don't like told me 
so he was thinking oh and oh yes I actually might be here for it because I liked how they they have become friends first the whole I mean the whole Frank's trip was great to watch and Adam yes. taking credit for the poo gate was uh, uh it was great to watch because Adam didn't have to do that and yet he wanted to help and he didn't want Raheem to feel embarrassed and then he carried on doing that wearing the sign and everything invited him to his dog show oh, Adam Adam and his dog by the way side note love it Adam's character development is one of my favorite things about this yeah. show and I really hope that in season four he gets a, a good storyline of either him finding a nice relationship or him just learning to be by himself yeah and like, like he asked for help he asked for help which was so important I would really like to see what happens between him and his dad because it was heartbreaking to watch the end when he, he asked his mom not to tell him he didn't win any prize at the dog show even though he won this special recognition but that was heartbreaking to hear him say to his mom go just don't tell dad about this I'm like oh no the, the whole Groff family I absolutely love I I am so obsessed with Samantha Spyro I love yeah. her so much so I love seeing more and more of her and I I just want that family to be sort of okay like I don't I don't want them to get back together no I just want it to be like a supportive environment for Adam because his mum is so supportive of him but she's kind of going off and living her own life because she's been so like locked away because of her husband um yeah but I I just want this family to be sort of civil and like just I don't know I just want it to be happy I want them all to be happy (laughs) again the fact that Adam's mom didn't pressure him to coming out even though she already she already knew by the end oh yeah and then just knew the whole time yeah just allowing Adam to take his time to then and when Adam actually came out to her she she just let it happen she didn't go oh my god oh or didn't go no thank you it was just a moment and then it was gone and that's that was beautiful to watch that that is the way it should be it's so that was so so beautiful and I just I would love that to happen with his dad yeah but I I don't know how that would go but I feel like I don't know I I want him to have a good relationship with his dad because yeah in the previous seasons it's been so rocky and now his dad's kind of yeah with his transformation transformation. yeah it's yeah it I I would love that for Adam I I just want Adam to be happy (laughs) yeah that's what I want for season four just I'm trying to think be happy if I prefer if it was Adam came out to his dad or the dad went to Adam it's okay I yeah because either of them is important for both of the characters so can we have a combination <laughs> I don't know how that would work yeah. I'm not a writer so. I don't know sort something out <laughs> yeah Please. but just for his dad for Adam to hear him dad go I'm sorry it's okay mm. let's let's try there you go after the scene <laughs> Yeah, that's the thing. We we don't need proper like proper action. We just need like sort of talking about this. communication. We need yeah. communication. 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 It's the thing. Them, day. <laughs> yeah. For them to show both their vulnerable sides to each other. I just oh, I just can it please happen? Mm. Please. Yeah, definitely. Another thing that I think is going to happen because I have heard that um emma isn't coming back um mm. play mave in season four well she's not done any of the press has she no i i i read that she kind of felt like she couldn't play a teenager forever which is true um do you think that the fact that she's going to america is kind of a way of her being like going off on her own journey now and just that she will stay in America. Yeah, if the fact, I didn't know there were rumours that she wasn't going to come back, but I think that's the perfect storyline for her to leave the show on, that 
she's choosing herself mm. she's following her heart out there because mm. she is she has got beautiful education she's so smart and she hasn't been able to um show that at Mordale so for <laughs> her to end on that story like how rude sorry <laughs> <So annoying. laughs> So for her to end on that storyline, they'd have to do a killer storyline for her to come back. It can't just be, oh, she's back. And she's going to be with Otis. Yeah. Yeah. I I like that they've done that, that she is going off and pursuing her career and everything. But yeah, I, I think that it's probably going to end up that she's going to stay there. She's going to get a job or something. And like maybe she'll have like a cameo, maybe like yeah, a, a video call or something. Maybe or they she might... can just come back like at the end when they graduate, when they leave high, the high school. Let's say graduate it's secondary school, but you know what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But also on that note, the school's getting shut down. Yes. Or will it? Or will it? Yeah. I feel like they can't. I mean, they. I reckon like one term left or something. Yeah. Some anonymous donor is going to pay for the school and then at the end, it'll be someone we just don't expect. It'll be Amy. No, it'll be Amy again, old money bags. <laughs> yeah. um, but I, yeah, I... I they, think- can't do, they can't do the show without Moordale because it will be hard because they'll all be at different schools. So the Unless they want to introduce a load of new characters. Possibly. I don't know. But then will it, will it have the same vibe and the same effect? I don't know. There's so many different variables, isn't there? But it was great that they brought in the uniform and stuff, Mm. uh, the whole storyline, and then the students standing up and doing the whole video and stuff like that. So for it to not be at Moordale anymore, maybe (laughs) they'll do Zoom. (laughs) They'll do Zoom school like I had to do. Oh, God forbid. Oh, I I mean, I'd watch that, but... (laughs) be traumatic wouldn't it oh my god but um yeah I but also on that note there is a lot of talk about who's going to be the new head and I personally want it to be good old Jim Colin Hendricks yes please I know but I love Miss Sands as well I think uh, them introducing that slight conflict because ah oh, their relationship's great too because it's so close <laughs> because it's not simple it's not normal and they're they're on their own oh, the whole uh jim's character proposing and then miss sam's going no we've been together for less than a year what are you playing at i i love jim so much and oh, we've... for people that watch <laughs> certification and you like mr hendrix please go and watch ghosts Yes, and, Land and horrible histories and Bill. They're called them there, but they haven't really got a company name. Yeah, but the whole group from horrible histories are. I think they're some of my favourites, and I know they're some of your favourites as well. Oh, as a group, oh, they're oh. brilliant writers, brilliant actors, and Jim. It was the perfect choice for this character in Sex seeing, Education. Seeing them pop up in different projects like separately just makes me so, so proud. Happy. And like when I started watching this, I didn't know that Jim was going to be in it. And no. then suddenly he pops up and then some childhood ruining moments. Um, yeah. Again, Baba Ganoush. Um, <laughs> we don't need to go into more detail than that. And the acapella, oh my God, the acapella group of him, I was, oh, I love I Pitch can't. Perfect, so that was great to watch too. I can't. Honestly, having a teacher like Mr Hendrix is probably so much fun. I didn't have any teachers like that. And Miss Sands as well. Yeah. Because they are both really fun teachers that you would learn from. And like I, I think Miss Sands is probably a better like teacher professionally. And like I think maybe she'd be a better head because of like, you know, after the sex education lesson where they were like separate. Oh she yeah. was like, I could lose my job for this, but go, go to a clinic. Go to get help, professional like, help. And I I loved that moment. And like she she has her moments where she's strict, but then yeah. she's the kind of teacher that you could go to and be like, I'm struggling. So like how Adam did. Adam. Yeah. Was he he couldn't face her to talk, but she still like understood and she was willing to help. And like yeah. 
I think she's probably the better candidate for like the, the head team. Maybe then prediction for their storyline for series four. Maybe they'll like have conflicts about who's it going to be fallout, and then at the end they can just be co heads. I would love and that. They will make because as much as I love the show, I don't know. Don't think it can run forever. No, because a the kids age. <laughs> They're all so they're gonna leave like 20, it's gonna be, Yeah, it's going to be hard for new characters to, to completely take over without mm-hmm. the core cast. So maybe that's how it'll let Series 4 will be the last one. Maybe I, I hope so. I think yeah. if they do any more, it's going to be like flogging it to death. Yeah, so they'll the cast will leave the, all the school kids and it will end. This is how I want it to end. <laughs> With more tales fully reopened, we see all the kids happy, learning different learning different things, having proper sex ed, having great time in classes. We go to the headmaster's office and who do we see? Them two together with their little name tags. <laughs> Separate desks. Oh my God. <laughs> so twin desks. Awesome. Oh my God. And then they get engaged and get married and they just live happily ever after. We and- just see, no, we see <laughs> Jim's character open the drawer and there's a little ring box and he closes it and he looks at Miss Sands and then the door shut. Oh my God. So can you please hire us as writers, please? Um, because we need that ending. Um, oh my God. I I would love that if they were both. Yeah. Features. Everything gets resolved. Mm. Everything happens, whether it's good or bad. But I think it needs, well, however it ends, I think it needs to end on a high note, a good note. Yeah, definitely. Oh yeah. It needs to be that Mordale's back. Mordale is a school that's positive about everything. And it has two of the best teachers running it. Mm. What more could you want? What more from a fiction? What more could you want from a fictional world that we are very obsessed about? So we've been talking <laughs> about this about... for about two hours now, and I regret nothing. And we like, I feel like we could talk about this all day, but yeah. there is just too much to cover. But I, I would be so happy with that ending. I just, I will be extremely upset because. It's my pet peeve when I've watched such a good film or such a good TV series and the ending has just ruined it. And I get so upset because <laughs> I'm wasting my time. I don't want to have to waste right. my time. Yeah, I don't mind it if you've like just joined in towards the end and like you're just binging it and like and it, it's more like the waiting from the beginning and investing yeah. like years of your life into this thing. I don't think they're going to do that. I don't. I don't think they would allow it to end badly. No. I But I didn't think they'd do that with Line of Duty. And let me tell you, Flo, I'm still not happy with that ending. <laughs> like, like, like many people. <laughs> and that was such a good show. And the ending, I'm sorry, was poor. But yeah. we'll not talk about that. Let's I, get back to sex education. <laughs> I, I just think, I don't know, judging by the writing so far, I think it should be a good ending. Yeah. I think they listen to the fans quite a lot and they they respect the fans and they like the whole thing about the show is representation and they represent yeah. so many different people and like so many different cultures as well and I I feel like they wouldn't they wouldn't disrespect their fans by doing like this is yeah. what we want to do. What if they did like a flash forward, like a few years? That's what, like Harry it. Potter? Sort of, but <laughs> better. Um, <laughs> so it's like... <laughs> we will not discuss Harry Potter. Cause, um, but it's like... Okay, okay. Adam's like running a dog sanctuary or dog show. And in the corner, Raheem's there like writing poetry and stuff. And you see like they're together. Amy's off like being a kick-ass female, boss. female leader yeah <laughs> female boss running her own company something like that so you could otis otis is having his first therapy session being the therapist officially oh Just my god like that. His, him and his mum should go into business together oh my god yes milburn oh. and sons oh my god i ah. Oh. I feel like we might need to wrap this up because we are going to go nuts with all these and like, go everyone and then just it. stop it off. Eric's out there living his best life. Yes. Yes. All, all, yeah. I, want. all I want is just Eric to live his best life. 
and for him to say, <laughs> wash your hands, you dirty pig, one more time. I've loved this. This is so much fun. Yes. I like talking about one of my favourite shows, one of my favourite people. This is this is so much fun. Yeah, you. <laughs> yeah, you. You're the only one. No, Cosette in the background. Um, <laughs> but um, this, I, I loved this. And we are going to be doing it again soon. We don't know when, but we are going to be talking about one of Marianne's specialist subjects, books. Books! Books! <laughs> oh, no. So tell people where they can find you. Well, if you want to follow my Bookstagram account, it's at Time to Read with T, where I have a fantastic community where on Instagram, we just talk all things books. And it's one of my favourite places to be. And I've met so many great people through them. So come and join us and you're in for your time of your life. So basically, if you enjoyed this YouTube community that we have, that we've just randomly created and we've all become best friends on here, like I've told you about some of like the people on here, they are some of my best friends now and I've never even met them. Yeah. And if you guys enjoy this and you also enjoy books, I thoroughly recommend you go to Bookstagram because that community seems so wholesome and like... Uh, yeah. I've it's- been on there now for a year and a bit. So I started because of the pandemic and it's one of the best decisions ever. And I can't wait to actually meet some of them in real life because mm. I feel like it's just going to be like I've known them forever. Mm. Genuinely. So- Internet friends are amazing. I mean, yeah. real life friends are great too. Love you. Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, I internet friends are great. So yeah, go and check out Bookstagram. I will leave Marianne's Instagram link in the description. Go yeah. and check- forget about my personal one. That's all right. Come and join my Bookstagram. <laughs> I'll leave. I'll leave both of them. I'll leave both of them because I appear on some of them. So you know, yeah. plug myself as well. I mean, you post some embarrassing things with me, but it's fine. I'm. <laughs> it's what I'm as. As a friend, it's what I'm here for. Exactly, exactly. But thank you so much for joining me. This is thank this you for is having the- me. And we will be back very yeah. shortly with our just- <laughs> with with my with my awesome mum. <laughs> but yeah, thanks for watching. Give it a like if you liked it. Subscribe if you want more of this. But as always, stay safe and look after yourselves. Bye. Bye.